Father? Will you listen to me? Ma, we're not going to discuss this matter any further. Ma. We'll discuss it forever. If it takes you that long to get over your stubbornness. I have heard all I want to hear about Miss Randy Rodnell. Rodney Randall. Oh, whatever his name is. He's a parasite. He, he's a lounge lizard. He's a hider behind a woman's skirter. Mr. Penn. You shouldn't say such things about a man you've never even met. And I never expect to meet him. But all he wants is an interview. All he wants is a chance to steal my money. But he doesn't want to steal it. All he wants is a chance to convince you that it's a good investment. Oh, it's the same word nowadays. My dear, do, do run along, please. I have most important things to attend to. Indeed you have, Mr. Penfield. This is the annual award day and... Are you going to listen to reason or aren't you? I am not. No. You're just an old miser. That's what you are. A gloaty, greedy, stingy old miser of money. But you're not going to spoil my life. Mr. Penfield... Well, I'm not going to let you spoil your life. Rodney and I don't have to use your money, you know. I have a little of my own. I won't let you give money to that... Nincompoop? Nincompoop, exactly. I forbid it. And I don't suppose you'd allow me to marry him, either? Most certainly not. I forbid that, too. I forbid you even to see this he gold digger again. Is that your final word? That is my final word. I'll wrap your ears around my final words. I'm going to give Rodney everything I have. I'm going to help him put over his subdivision idea. And I'm going to marry him whether you like it or not. Oh, you are, eh? Well, I'll put a stop to that, young lady. Pat, come in here at once. I'm right here, sir. Uh, where have you been? Oh, I've been here quite a while, sir. Ever since Miss Barbara called you an old... Let, let that pass, will you? Where are you standing there with that, with that shaving mug for? But, Mr. Penfield, this is the Penfield Stop trophy and... Stop blithering and put it down. Uh, yes, sir. I want you to stop my daughter's allowance. I want you to tie up her bank account. Oh, yes, sir. I'll show her who's boss of this family. I'll teach her a lesson. Yes, sir. Well, what are you waiting for? Why, uh, uh... Oh, <laughs> get that champagne mug out of here. But, Mr. Penfield... What is it? What is it? All the employees are gathered in the courtyard, sir. Do waiting for you. Waiting for me? What are they waiting for me for? Why aren't they at work? But this is the annual award day. Oh, oh, the annual one. And they're, uh, they're waiting for me? Uh, to present the awards. Oh, why, she, well, if we can't keep the folks waiting. No, now, sir. That's a bad example. Yes, sir. Always be punctual. Remember that, Fash. Yes, sir. Well, quit, darling. Go on, go on your way. Go on, sir. <laughs> Long distance, please. I want the Royal Valley Hotel, Valley Springs. I want to speak to Mr. Rodney Randall. That's right. Well, I... I'm afraid we can't, dear. Babs, dear, how many times have I told you that I will not marry a woman unless I can support her properly? Besides, I can't come to the city now. Well, if you must know, I haven't enough money to get out of the hotel. Now, I'll just have to stay here till I can find some suck, uh, uh, backer for my subdivision. Well, how much do you owe, darling? Oh, well, don't worry about that. I'll get it to you somehow. Yes. I'll bring it to you today. And I love you, too. <laughs> Goodbye. Here's your speech, Mr. Penfield. <coughs> Thank you. Um, where are my glasses? You left them in the office. Why don't you bring them in? You know I can't read this without my glasses. It's the same speech you always make on award days. The same one? Friends and co-workers of the Penfield Peerless Laundries, you don't know how I've looked forward to this day this day of days. Well, efficiency system, the winner of the Peerless Penfield Trophy. 
This is the trophy. This trophy. <laughs> I'm certain that you all, you all uh, applaud the winner. The man who by his out, outstanding efficiency, his punctuality, his, his diligence has achieved his goal. Your friend, my friend, what's that guy's name? Jay Bassett. Hmm? Jay Bassett. <laughs> Jay Fawcett. Not Fawcett, Bassett. <laughs> Took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> Jay Bassnett. <laughs> will the uh, will the uh, will the winner please step forward? Will the winner please come forward? <laughs> oh, I have just learned. I just learned that the winner, typical of the efficiency of the Penfield Laundry Service is now on her, this is route, and we'll be back in approximately uh, uh, two minutes. Six pairs of socks, nine hankies, couple of drawers, couple of shorts. Hey, look it. Look at what? Look at it. Well, what's wrong with it? Brand new, ain't it? That makes 18 brand new silk shirts that guy's had since March. And each one of them costing more than I make in a week. Yeah, and those shirts earn him more than we both make in a year. Huh? You heard me. How do you figure? How can a shirt earn dough for? It's front, my boy. Wind addressing. Believe me, if I ever get a bankroll, I'll... Well, I'll have to find us front in town. I don't get you. It's simple. The guy that owns those shirts dresses like a million bucks. So he'll have a million someday. You know, it isn't what you got in this world that counts, Beef. It's what you look like. Oh, you're wrong, Jerry. To get to be a big shot, you gotta work harder than anybody else and show the boss how good you are. Oh, sure, sure. I tried that, didn't I? I set up nights working out that new flat rate system, and what happened? Well? Vash took all the credit for it, and I got a tougher route. Now look at us. We dress like 30 bucks a week, and what do we get? 25. Right. Now, if I were to put on that shirt and the clothes that go with it, what do you suppose I'd be able to get? A pain in the neck. This guy wears a 14 collar. Mr. Penfield, this is Mr. Bass. How are you? Quiet. Quiet. Now, young man, I'm going to present you with a goal that you have striven so earnestly to win. The Penfield... Thank you, thank you very much, sir. Uh, just, just a moment, please. I, I have a little surprise. Mm -hmm. uh, not only does he retain the trophy, but he is soon to become the lucky participant in another award. Please. <clears throat> Young man, here is your opportunity to become a member and a partner in the Penfield Laundries. <clears throat> you may have your choice of this envelope which contains a thousand dollars or these 11 shares of Penfield stock with a par value of uh, $1,100. 11 shares with which you can become a part over, like I, except uh, on a smaller scale. <laughs> what, what do you is say? The, is the stock at par now, Mr. Penfield? Well, uh, uh, not uh, at the present moment. Now, but with your cooperation and coordination, why, <laughs> we'll put our shoulders... Well, I'll take the cash. What are you talking about? You don't want I to... want the cash. I don't want any shares in any laundry. I'm fed up with laundries, and I'm sick and tired of dirty clothes and cranky customers. I'm taking the money, and you, sir, can take the laundry, the trucks, stock, mangles and all, wrap them neatly into a laundry bag, and... But you, you don't understand. Cash. Call him back and fire him. Fire him, and don't call him back. 
There you are, Mr. Bezant. <laughs> well, what do you think? Well, you put it in a little in there and uh, pat up the shoulders a little and, and put some foil buttons on the vest, huh? Where do you think I'm going to, a masquerade? Well, one round Finnegan had his rags tricked up like that, and he was the best dressed fighter outside the ring. What do you think? Mr. Bezant, with a few minor alterations, <laughs> you look positively magnificent. Magnificent. <laughs> positively beautiful. <laughs> well, I get a piece of paper and mark down the changes you need, and then I'll try on the other ones. The other ones? How many suits are you going to get? All of them. Now, wait a minute. Oh, I've waited years to play this hunch. But all those suits, that's an awful lot of jack to lay out. It's only the beginning. Only the beginning, folks. Come on, come on. Give me the rest of it before I call the silly way. Well, I want some luggage, a set of golf clubs, new bag, one good piece of jewelry and a snappy car. That's where I come in. You ain't gonna buy a second-hand car. Well, I gotta have a... Because I'm gonna get it for you. I know more about engines than you hey, ever... Hey, wait a minute, Bezzard. Leos, Mr. Bezzard, you gotta stood still. You stay here and play pincushion, and I'll get the chariot for you. Hey, Pete, come back here. Bye-bye, Sonny. Well, good morning, miss, and what can I do for you? I've got to raise some money right away. I see. And I want to sell my car. Well, young lady, you certainly came to the right place. Most of the boys along this drag had picked the fillings right out of your teeth. But not old Doc Adams. Golden Rule Adams, that's what they call me. Square with one and square with all. How much do you got to have? How much is the car worth? Well, you see, lady, it's all a question of what I can sell it for. It's a pretty looking job, but it sure is a cream puff. Cream puff? Yeah, yeah. Too swell a heap for the used car market. Guys buying used cars can't buy gas for these big berthers. That makes them hard to sell. Just a headache. But the car's only a month old. Yeah, sure, I can see that easy. If it was a little older, I could give you more on it. You mean you'd pay more for an older car? Yeah. Mm hmm. Proves there ain't no flaws in them when they've stood up for, say, uh, 10,000 miles. <laughs> a lot of angles to this, uh, this business, miss. How much will you give me for it? Mm, I don't know. I always get myself stuck buying cars. Got too soft a heart, I guess. How much will you give me? Well, I'll tell you. Just on account of you, I'll give you 400 bucks, cash on the line. 400? You know how much the car's worth. Sure, sure, I know that, but just trying to do you a favor, that's all. The car's insured for... Uh -uh. Now, lady, I don't go in for no rackets like that. If you want to have your car swiped for the insurance, you'll have to try to find somebody else to do it. No, 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 you don't understand. I've got to raise money. Now, if you make any sort of a decent offer... Well, uh, how about some sort of a trade? Maybe a little cash in one of my fine, slightly used cars. That might work out. Wait a minute, my dear, wait a minute. What are we stopping here for? Well, I just happened to recollect, my dear, that a dear old pal and bosom friend of mine runs that jalopy joint over there. Good old Doc Adams. That's the name, all right. But what's any old friend of yours doing out of jail? <coughs> now, now, my dear, have a little respect for your father, please. I'm sorry. Do you suppose he's good for a touch? Friend like old Doc? My dear? We're practically sitting down to lunch at the Ritz right now. I know. Let's make it five full dinners at the beanery instead. Patience, my dear, patience. While your pappy puts the bee on old Doc Adams. Good luck, Pop. Now, here's what I call a rare opportunity. Oh, opportunity? <laughs> you could hardly call it a car. Now, look, miss. I'm just trying to help you. Is it still able to run? Why, say, miss, this car is just nicely broken in. You mean broken down, don't you? Uh, <laughs> uh, tell you what we'll do. We'll take a little ride in it. Just step in here and try this elegant upholstery. There you are. Well, well. If it isn't my old pal and bosom friend, old Doc Adams. Oh, go on, feed it. Is that the way to greet a pal? To welcome a man with whom you trod the paths of adversity to shun a loving brother. Oh, scram, I'm busy. But, but Doc is one friend to another. I'd... Well.
Sweet job, buddy. Yeah. Certainly is. Practically new, ain't you? Practically. Now, how much you asking for? Asking for, uh... I asked you how much. Uh, well, uh, that depends. Uh, what do you mean, depends? How much you've got? I mean, uh, on various things. Yeah, never mind the build-up, Toots. All I want to know is how much you want for cash. Cash? Cash. Uh, 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 make me an offer. Mm, 400 bucks. So. Hey, wait a minute. What's the catch? Catch? There's no catch. This car ain't hot, is it? Well, I should say not. Well, uh, what's the idea? Uh, well, you see, I'm uh, getting out of the used car business. This is a clearance sale. Uh, prices reduced on all cars. Brother, you made a sale. Uh. How about it, Pop? Do we? Do we? I'll say we do, Prudence, darling. And we're going to get our working clothes out of Hawk. Pop, you're wonderful. Wait to see me in my frock coat again. Colonel Cornelius of the Kentucky Corneliuses. Oh, Pop, make it the Russian Grand Duke. I get so balled up on that southern accent stuff. Yes, darling, and you're not so hot as Al Katanovich either. Never mind, honey. Our luck has turned. right here. Well, you, you should not have left your keys in it. But it's all your fault. Oh, no, no, no. Wait a minute, lady. You can't hang that swipe on me. I got an alibi. I was with you. But if you hadn't wasted so much time trying to make that cement mixer do 50. You wanted a demonstration, didn't you? I didn't ask for Cook's tour. Well, say, it may be a lucky break for you with that. Now you can get that insurance money you were talking about. Of course, you'll uh, have to wait 90 days. I can't possibly wait that long. I've got to have the money today. Now, what am I going to do? Uh, well, I'll tell you, miss. To show you my heart's in the right place, I'll make you a deal. Yes? Sure. I'll give you that swell little clothes job and maybe a little cash besides. Oh, thank you. Uh, for that diamond ring you're sporting. Come on. Oh, I'd forgotten about that. Well, it's a go. All right. Come on in the office and we'll report the swipe. Oh, uh, uh, what was the license number of your car? License number? Well, I don't know. Oh, well, the cops can check up on it. We'll phone them and then we can fix up the papers on this ring deal. Hey, Jerry, Jerry, give me, give me. How you like it? Here's your change. And here's your bill of sale. Well, I still don't believe it. Mr. Bassett. Yes, Mr. Bassett. You didn't tell me where I should send these beautiful garments. Well, how soon can you have them ready? Oh, oh, I couldn't possibly have them before next Monday evening. And if I gave you an extra $10 for a rush job? In an hour and a half. Get going. Thank you. Well, you got a lot of car there, miss. Well, dependable transportation, what I mean. I hope so. Well, you got my word for it. Honest Doc Adams' word. Why, that little job is just about perfect. Well, goodbye. So long. Excuse me. That's all right. Uh, tell me the worst, Doctor. Will she live? Huh? What's the bad news? Well, the water jacket's busted and the connecting rod bearings are shot along with two of the mains. The cylinders are out and nine hundredths easy. The ignition wiring is mostly rotted and half of the teeth are gone off your transmission and differential gear. Your frame has sprung out of line and, well, outside of that... Never mind, uh, never mind. Tell me, could I drive it as far as the Royal Valley Hotel? Lady, you couldn't push it that far. Hmm. Tell you what I'll do. I've got a junkyard. I'll give you five bucks for the heap the way she stands. I'll take it before she falls down. There you are. I don't suppose you could give me a lift to Royal Valley, could you? I'd love to, lady, but I did that once, and my wife raised heck. She's very jealous. 
Oh. Why don't you stand over there where anybody coming along can see you? Maybe someone will give you a lift. Yeah? Sure. Oh, thanks. I'll try that. Anything I can do? You might try knocking before you enter Lady's Woodwall. Sorry, but you left the door open. Can I be of any help? You going that way? Well, I'm going as far as the Royal Valley Hotel. Oh, fine, fine. Oh. What's the matter? This car, it's exactly like That's the one... That's so? Yeah. Well, there's quite a few of them. Yes, I guess there are. Here, I'll help you with those bags. All right. Well, you travel pretty heavy for a hitchhiker. Oh, I'm not a slaver professionally. Oh. My car broke down. So? I had to sell it for junk. What's the BP stand for? BP? Yeah, your initials? Oh, yeah, oh, uh, Beatrice. Uh, Beatrice Payne. Beatrice Payne? Mm -hmm. Well, meet J. Walter Bassett. Jerry to you. How do you do, Jerry? I'm doing all right. Welcome to Royal Valley. You have reservations, sir? I never make reservations. I want something nice with southern exposure. Certainly, Mr. Bassett. Oh, didn't you forget something? Forget? You didn't register for Mrs. Bassett. Oh, the young lady and I... We're we... not married. Not married? No. I'll register for myself. Certainly. But I want a room with uh, northern exposure. Certainly. You better not try this, sister. The prices here are terrible. I'll worry about that when I check out. But they can put you in jail, but... I'm sure you'll enjoy your stay, Mr. Bassett. I hope so. Good afternoon, B. Oh, good afternoon. And thanks, sir. Uh, Jerry. This way, sir. Welcome to Royal Valley, Miss Penfield. Oh, Penfield. Are you Miss Barbara Penfield? Yes. I'm sorry I didn't remember you. Is your father coming down too, Miss Penfield? I hope not. And if you should phone, don't tell him I'm here. When father gets like that, he just won't listen to anything. Well, I don't want to appear critical, Barbara, but it does seem to me that you gave up too easily. But Rodney, dear, I told After you... After all, I'm willing to let your father in on the grandest seaside subdivision ever planned. Oh, I know you are, dearest. And it's sweet of you to be so generous when he's been so unkind, but father... But you know what it means to us. Of course I do, dear. Now, perhaps your father is cooled off by now. And if you go back to the city and have a talk with him, he might consent to see me. He's just set a new record for high blood pressure. All right. Very well, I'm, I'm through. All my lovely dreams. My wonderful plans for our future. Oh, don't say that, dear. Look on the brighter side. Things are a bit better, you know. Better? Yes, your hotel bill is paid. You have a little money besides. Yeah? Your money? To think that I'd have to ask you for money. But it makes me so happy to be able to help just a little bit. You know, and now I have an idea. Oh, really? You bet I have. You know, there must be simply photos of people staying here at this very hotel. And don't you think you could persuade one of them to invest in your subdivision idea? 
What do you think I've been doing down here? Playing marble? Oh, you mean you tried that? Of course I've tried it. No one has any money to invest. Oh, well, they have plenty of money. But they won't part with any. You see that chap right over there? Poindexter? Mm -hmm. He has an income of a million and a quarter. And, um, and the chap with him, Thompson, he just merged the intercoast. That's, uh, that's worth five million. With uh, APNL, that's worth another million seven hundred and fifty thousand. And uh, Bainbridge, the old goat sitting over there, he just won a four hundred and eighty thousand dollar court judgment. The chap just going out there, young, uh, young Ralston. He inherits nine million dollars next Tuesday. And all I need is a paltry 50,000. Do I get it? No. Rodney, I just had another idea. Well, I hope it's better than the last one. The chap who brought me here. You know, he may be the very man we want. Oh, really? What's his name? That's it. That's it. Uh, J. Walter Bassett. Did you ever hear of him? That sounds familiar. What do you think we go see? Sir? Yes, sir. Would you care for a cocktail, sir? I could go for a shot. <laughs> a few drops of your best port wine for my daughter. <laughs> Have you all any Kentucky bourbon whiskey? Yes, sir. <laughs> well, I'll indulge in some of it, if you please, sir. A little fathead. Well, what's the matter now? I could go for a, a fine southern lady you are. What were you going to ask for, a sidecar? No, a shot of vodka. Vodka? Now, listen. I'm not the Russian Grand Duke, and you're not Olga. Olga. She was the one who drank vodka. That's right, sweetheart. That's right. But now listen carefully. You're Prudence Cornelius, and I'm your pappy, Colonel Cornelius of Kentucky. Oh, I get so balled up. Perplexed. Not balled up. Well, I do get balled up. Pappy. Shut up. Well, you told me to call you Pappy. Now look at this. Look at these figures. One million and a quarter, five million, one million seven hundred and fifty thousand, four hundred and eighty thousand, nine million. Rudin, honey, you're about to fall in love with that man. What man? The man that put down these figures. Now, let's see. How can we meet him? Make a fire spot, buddy? Do I? See that young lady sitting over there, the fellow with the mustache? Yes, sir. Her name is Beatrice Payne. I want to find out what room she's in, how expensive it is, and all that. Think you can handle it? You bet I can. Oh, hello, Mr. Bass. Oh, how do you do? Right, this is the Good Samaritan I was telling you about. Oh, really? Well, I certainly want to thank you. Oh, it's no trouble at all. Now that you two shaken hands, may I introduce you? Uh, Mr. Bassett, Mr. Randall. How do you do? Not the J. Walter Bassett. Yes, uh, I'm J. Walter Bassett. You've uh, heard of me? Well, who hasn't? <laughs> yeah. Now, boys, please, don't start talking business. You know, Rodney can never take his mind off of making money. I'm sorry, but when you're on the verge of a big deal... You... Oh, I should say I do know. Right now, for instance... Uh, shall we go out on the terrace? <clears throat> uh, his, uh... Face is so familiar to me, but his name has just slipped my mind. His name is Randall, Rodney Randall. Of course. Now imagine my forgetting that. <laughs> well, have you a scrap of paper handy, sir? Oh, uh, boy. That's it. Yes, that's very true. I've developed some fine subdivisions in my time, but this this seaside idea. Well, it's... it certainly sounds good to me. Well, it is good. Any man with executive ability can take hold of it right now and make history. You are an executive, aren't you? 
Why, yes. Why, he's one of the best. <laughs> well, I'd hardly say that. Now, Mr. Bassett, now, this is no time for false modesty. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, I have delivered some of the biggest men in the city. Perhaps. Mr. Randall? Yes. Yeah. This is for you, sir. Oh, thank you. Excuse me, Hunter. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll have to ask you to excuse me for a minute. Um, will you look out for the young lady, Bassett? Well, it'll be a pleasure. Thank you. Okay, sir. That gentleman, sir. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, pardon me, uh, Colonel Cornelius? At your service, sir. Uh, Mr. Randall, I believe. Yes. Uh, uh, Prudence, dear, I want to introduce you to the gentleman we've been awaiting for, Mr. Ebenezer Randall. I'm delighted, sir. I'm sorry, Colonel, there's been some mistake. I'm, I'm Rodney Randall. Rodney Randall? Yes. Well, well, swap me for Yankee, sir. <laughs> well, I never dreamed there could be two Mr. Randalls. I presumed, of course, that you were the emissary from the United Tobacco Growers. Oh, I'm sorry, no. I, I'm the subdivision Randall. Oh, well, I'm mighty glad to make your acquaintance, sir. Thank you. And I'm pleased that the other Mr. Randall ain't shown up tonight. I, I'm a little bit too tired to argify with him. Oh, Pappy, why don't you just let them other growers have their way? What? And bust the tobacco market wide open? Why, honey, you know I grow more than all the others put together. But that wire you had from Washington, from the president. Now, listen, honey, child, you let the president run the nation and I'll run the tobacco business. And I be... Why, well, I beg your pardon, sir, for losing my temper in your presence. But it gets so tarnation mad. Happy? I apologize again, sir. That's quite all right, Colonel. I understand exactly how you feel. Do you indeed, sir? Absolutely. I realize how annoying the small fry of competition can be. Mr. Randall, you're a man after my own heart. I'm a humbly ask that you'll do my daughter and myself the honor of uh, joining us at the bar in a small refreshment. It'll be a pleasure, Colonel. Uh, come, come, darling. I can't imagine what's detaining Mr. Randall. Well, whatever it is, I'm in favor of it. You're just being polite. Oh, do you really think so? I know you businessmen. You'd much rather be talking about bonds, mergers, and big deals. <laughs> oh, not right now, I wouldn't. Why, with all this beautiful moonlight, I'd much rather be talking about... Just what line of business are you in, Mr. Bassett? Well, as a matter of fact, I'm sort of between operations right now, as it were. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, I... Uh... I just closed my last enterprise. A successful one? Oh, very. My association and myself cleaned up plenty. As a matter of fact, we left some of the biggest businessmen in town with hardly a shirt to their back. How delightful. Uh, Mr. Randall, miss. Uh, if you'll excuse me. Surely. Will there be an answer? No, thank you. No bad news, I hope. Yes, uh, in a way. Mr. Randall's been delayed. Important business. Well, I call that excellent news. <laughs> now, Mr. Bassett. <laughs> you called me Jerry this afternoon. Oh, uh, did I? I don't remember that. <laughs> yes, you did, B. They, um, uh, tell me that the hotel has some very lovely gardens somewhere around. It has? Yes, shall we, uh, try and find them? Well, it's getting a bit chilly, don't you think? Oh, but it's not that cold. Well, I'd have to get a wrap. Well, I'll wait. All right. Psst. Hi, boss. Well, Sherlock, did you find out anything? You bet I did. She's a guest. Room 203. I slipped in while she was out. She got a lot of swell clothes, a pip of a dresser set, and some peachy perfume, too. Here, smell. P-P-U. Kind of gets you, don't it? Sure does. Well, what else did you find out? Her real name's Barbara Penfield. Barbara Pen... Oh, don't be silly. I saw her signature on the register card. She's old F. Thorndike Penfield's daughter. But that little hitchhiker? Why, she's no more Penfield's daughter than I am. Four-flusher, eh? Huh? Maybe I'd better tell the manager. Oh, no, don't do that. Not yet. You just keep your mouth shut and your eyes open. Now, go on. Okay, boss. Well, uh, here I am. Oh, you all set? All set. 
Oh, that's fine. Look, do you mind if I speak out of turn? Why, no. Well, I know it's none of my business, but you're too nice a girl to do what you're doing. You know you can't get away with it. I can't get away with what? Pretending you're Barbara Penfield. Supposing Randall found out who you really are, just a girl after his money. Oh. Don't worry, I'm the only one who knows. You can trust me. <laughs> That's sweet of you. Well, why don't you go straight? Mm. I, I'm afraid it's too late. Oh, don't talk like that. I'll help. Will you? Will you really? Well, I'll do anything in the world that I can. Then, then I'll try. That a girl. I've always heard southern girls were entrancing, but I never believed it till now. Well, uh, I'd best go in and find my pappy. No, please don't. Uh, pappy would be a powerful man if he found us sitting here like this. Suppose he found us like this? Oh, I don't know what he'd think. Babushka. What? Oh, uh, I mean, you know them as a show masterful. As far as I'm concerned, dear, I've been captured by the South. What's better with this place? Everybody asleep. What kind of service is this? Johnson! Hot your horn. Yes, sir. Said. <laughs> never, never mind that. Dear. Take the bags out, will you, please? Yes, sir. Yeah. Wait a minute. Never mind the luggage. Keep on honking. Yes, Mr. Penfield. <laughs> is something wrong, honey boy? Yes. I mean, no. Uh, 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 everything's all right. Yes, sir. Uh, Prudence, I'm sorry, but you'll have to excuse me. I, I, I just remember something, something very urgent. Oh, is you all going to leave your little Prudence? Yeah, well, I'm sorry, but I have to. I, I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, oh. <laughs> As soon as I make my next connection, I'll find a place for you. Some honest job. Oh, yes, so good to me. I lost my compact. I must have left it with the bench. Well, you wait here. I'll find it. What's the matter? Your father. He's here. Oh. Oh, he is. And he's looking for you. Uh, for us. I bet he doesn't know you. Well, he will guess who I am if he sees me with you. Yes. Yes, I, I suppose you will. So from now on, we're strangers. We mustn't be seen together. Oh, but Rodney, I... Now, now, dear, I, I know it's going to be difficult, but, but it won't be for long. Mm -hmm. I, I found a grand prospect tonight. A wealthy tobacco grower. How oh, splendid. And Mr. Bassett. Shh. Here he comes. No luck. I'll have to get a flashlight. I was just going to find you. I remember now I left it in my room. Oh, that's great. Uh, have you any idea where they might be, Mr. Penfield? Well, you're the manager of the hotel. What are your ideas? Well, they they might be over on the golf course. <laughs> playing playing golf in the dark, I suppose. You, know, you see, the golf course is quite romantic by moonlight. Um, yeah, I never thought of that. Well, suppose you search over there, will you please? Uh, very well. I'll find her. What's the big idea, poodle face? I wish I could tell you how much this evening has meant to me. 
And to me. Good night. Ooh. Penfield! Yes, Penfield. I'll teach you to kidnap Stid. You can't steal my daughter and get away with it. Is me. she your daughter? Is she? You know, you know very well she's my... I'll thrash you within an inch of your life. I'll, I'll run you out of the country. Are you sure she's your daughter? Am I sure? Why, why, you, why you insolent young puppy. Take that! And furthermore, young lady, it's about time you learn to obey my orders. From now on, you'll do as I say, or either, well, well, you will do as I say, and that's my final word on the subject. Can I depend on that, Captain Bly? Oh, yes. And about that young, uh, that young rascal uh, uh, that you think you're in love with. How do you expect me to sleep with you shrieking? I don't expect you to sleep. I expect you to get that bully out of your mind. Bully? Yeah. That's a new name for him, isn't it? That's what he is. He's a bully. He's, he assaulted me. He assaulted me last night, your own father. He did what? He, put, he squared off at me. He, he caught me off my guard. He picked me up and hurled me off the terrace. Picked you up? But, well, I mean, when I say pig, I don't mean regular pig. How did he do it? One piece at a time. Look, what are you up to, young lady? Where are you going? I'm going to take my shower. Any objections? Don't you think you're going to slip out and meet that Randall fellow? What? I say you can't go anywhere without me. I'm going the minute I get dressed. I... You... I forbid it. I absolutely forbid it. Yes, I was saying, my friend, I consider the mint julep the true and modern reincarnation of the mythical ambrosial nectar. I'm afraid I'll stick to beer. Uh, every man to his taste, sir. And here's to you. Thanks. <sighs> yes, sir, every man to his taste. <laughs> in business, in uh, ladies, and in liquor. Right you are, sir. <laughs> Uh, of course, I, I don't mean to say it doesn't do a man good to make a change now and then. In liquor? And in business, yes, sir. Does a man good to heist himself out of a rut when he finds himself in one? There's something in what you say, sir. Now, take me, for instance. A prosperous tobacco grow with acres and acres of the gentle weed just to grown for me in Kentucky's most fertile land. A princely income, whether I turn a hand or not. Am I happy? Or do you think I'm happy? Of course not, Colonel. You need a change. Son, you spit right in a knot hole that time. <laughs> <laughs> I know just how you feel, Colonel. How you take myself. And so do I. Why, I'm known as a subdivision king. I've made money hand over fist. But just now I've almost completed a development that's going to make history. And am I getting any kick out of it? None at all. Personally, I never feel right unless I'm working hard managing something. Well, of course, I have no uh, idea of retiring. Neither have I. <laughs> well, gentlemen, kind of looks as if we might consider some means of uh, exchanging interests, huh? Colonel, now there's an idea. <laughs> Isn't it, eh? Why, we could all get a new slant on life. It is kind of appealing, isn't it? Enticing, to say the least. Well, of course, my sentiments are scandalized at a bare suggestion. Now, the old Cornelius plantation should ever pass out of the hands of my family. Well, of course, I wouldn't dare part with my property without considering and consulting my associates. Associate? Then you are not the sole owner of... Uh... Well, of course, uh, I hold the controlling interest. Mm. <laughs> well, what would you consider your interest worth, sir? Um, what price would you put on your property, Colonel? Well, sir, I consider my interest invaluable. Yes, sir, invaluable. I'd consider managing a... 
I'd uh, enjoy managing a tobacco plantation for a change, or a subdivision for that matter. Colonel, that's a great idea of yours. Now you name your figure. Well, for right now, I find that to be a most perplexing um, uh, question. I, um, well, you see, we Southern uh, people are not just business folk. Oh, Pappy. Oh, I beg your pardon, but it's time for you all to phone Washington. Is it? Already? You know, you asked me to remind you. Why, so I did, so I did. <laughs> well, honey, I want you to meet Mr. Bassett. This is my daughter, Prudence. How do you do, sir? <laughs> How do you do? I need your indulgence, but this is most important. Secretary of the Interior. Won't you sit down, Miss Prudence? Oh, thank you, sir. Tell you my patronage. Uh, you lost that button at once. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Fanfield, but... Uh, Say, there he is now. Now is your chance to go and order him to leave. I'd like to oblige, Mr. Fanfield, but... All right, then. All right. I shall never be a guest of this hotel again. Well, um, who's that? Who's that chap with him? Oh, you mean that fellow with Mr. Randall? That's Mr. Bassett. That, that name was familiar to me in some hmm. way. What a charming chap! Successful too. Nice car and good luggage. Nice car, good luggage. Hmm. Hmm. That opens up a new line of thought. Is there something I can do, Mr. Penfield? Another thing. Thank you. Another thing. <laughs> Your father's very lucky to have you around to remind him of things. Oh, he's most forgetful, the poor dear. And the secretary'd just be wild if and Pappy sold his crop without letting Washington know. Really? Oh, yes. It always floods the market when Pappy sells his cuttings. Oh, I see. She that young man over at that table with the little mustache and the blue. Yes, sir. <laughs> Tell him a gentleman would like to see him in the lobby right away. Yes, Mr. Don't, Bethel. don't, don't uh, tell him my name just... Say a gentleman. Very good, sir. Uh, um, come here, young man. Oh, uh, excuse me. Uh, no, no, wait a minute. I want to talk to you, please. To me? Yes. There must be some mistake. There's no mistake. Uh, you're the man I want. Uh, oh. Yeah. Uh, sit down, please. Uh, but I've got to see a man about it. Sit, sit down. I've been talking to the... Uh, Manager of the hotel about you. To the manager? Yes, and he gave me a lot of information about you. I suppose he would. Yeah. He said you were an uprising, energetic go-getter. He said that about me? Yes, and a lot more, Mr. Bassett. Bassett? Yeah. <laughs> I know who you are, you know, Bassett. Uh -huh. Well, that's very nice. You... You know who I am? You're Mr. Penfield. Well, sir, now we can talk business, you know. You'd, uh, you'd like to make some money? How? My foolish daughter thinks she's in love with a good-for-nothing fortune hunter, Rodney Randall. I see. You, uh, you know him? Uh, we've met. Oh, of course. I've seen you together. Well, we must cure her of that mad infatuation. Completely? Permanently. She's going to fall in love with you. With me? Well, why not? You're the very type she should fall in love with. A successful, prosperous, uh, handsome man. Well, like, like me, personally. And you want to hire me? Exactly. I'll give you $2,000 the day that you sweep her off her feet and make her forget that Randall fellow. Um, uh, you want me to marry her? Well, I, of course, I, we have, we take that up later, if you don't mind. Um, well? Is it a deal? It's a deal. There we are. There we are. And you're certain that your father is in a selling mood? Oh, positive, Mr. Bassett. But, uh... Promise me that you won't let him know that I told you about it. Oh, I'll promise. Well, uh, I'm afraid I'll have to leave you now. I have to remind Pappy to wire the British Foreign Office. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hey, what's going? Who did that? Yoo-hoo! Hey, Jerry! Oh, so it's you. Well, what do you want? 
I want help. I'm locked in. What is that, another gag, Miss Penfield? Honest, it isn't. Please let me out. Well, all right. Is that you, Jerry? Yes. Who locked you in? My beloved father. Out there. Woo! Stay out. Oh, pardon me. Would you mind handing me my clothes? Well, I don't see any clothes in here. Uh, in the closet. There's nothing in there but some shoes and hats. Oh, dear. Well, hand me a sheet. Sheet? Uh, and some safety pins. Where? There, on the dressing table. There you are. I got one's open. Thanks. You're almost welcome. Well, goodbye. Oh, please don't go. Why not? Because I need your help. No, thanks. I don't want to be played for a sap again, Miss Penfield. Oh, I'm sorry if you think I tried that. Oh, no. You just told me your name was Beatrice Payne and let me think I'd reformed you. Well, don't you understand? I, I was driven to it. Oh, won't you let me explain? All right, go ahead. Well, you see, fathers, forcing me into marrying Rodney Randall. I came down here under an assumed name uh, to get away from them. You didn't know that Randall was here? Well, certainly not. He followed me. So did Father. Oh. <laughs> I told them I was in love with another man. They don't believe me. Uh, they, they keep bullying me. Why didn't you let me know? I'd have punched their noses. I had an inspiration. I told them you were the man. What man? The man I'm in love with. Uh, do you mind very much? No, no, not at all. In fact, I'll uh, help you keep them guessing. Oh, fine. How are we working? We'll have to be seen together a lot and uh, let them guess that we're crazy about each other. Uh, you're a peach to do this for me, Jerry. Oh, not at all. I'll get quite a kick out of it. I did already. Well, goodbye for a while. Goodbye. Goodbye. Quick, your father. Come back here. You, you bought to a bandit. You, you should be ashamed of yourself. Go in your room. How, how dare you entertain this Randall fellow in a sheet? He wasn't in the sheet, Dad. I was. Don't, don't quibble with me. You know how I hate quibbling? Never, never quib. Was I quibbling? But you said that. I never mind what I said. Get into your writing clothes. Why? Don't ask me. Do as I say. I can't understand this sudden yen of yours to play jockey. Well, you know, I've always loved horses. Now, if you loved them, you'd stay off of them. Oh, well, I'm... Oh, look who's here. Where? Over there. My old friend and business acquaintance, Bassett. Bassett? Yeah. Uh, Jerry, please, please, please. Babs. Hello, Mr. Benfield. Hello. This is Jerry Bassett, my daughter, Babs. This is a pleasure. How do you do? Um... You look so you're going riding, too? Yes, I am. Well, then, why not join us? Delighted. Uh, oh, by the way, Mr. Penfield, did you know that Gillespie was stopping here? Gillespie? In the hotel here? I, I must see Gillespie. I must. You, you two run along, and I'll see you later. This couldn't possibly be a frame-up, could frame it? Frame-up? Whatever. Let that into your mind. I have something important to say to Gillespie. Oh, but never mind, Dad. Never mind. Uh, are you ready, Mr. Bassett? Ready. Seven S seven six four O. That's the one, all right. Who brought it in here? Guy named Bassett, J. Walter Bassett. Uh huh. Now don't say nothing to nobody. Right. 
You say he's been getting thick with some of your respectable guests? Yes, he has. Uh, you don't think he's trying to... I don't think nothing till I get all the facts. But if he ain't up to something bigger than a car snatch, I ain't the best detective on the force. Mustn't have any scandal. Now, don't get your ears in a tangle. Everything's under control. What are you going to do? Give him more rope. Give him all the rope he wants and then make him eat it. So far, you're doing all right with Mr. Randall. I'm sure I could do much better as Olga. Can I change now? Now? After giving him that Mason and Dixon line? Well, uh, I could tell him my mother was Russian. Prudence, you know a head like yours ought to be at some university. Really? Yes, in a bottle of alcohol. Alcohol. I'd like that. Now, quit acting like your mother. There's Bassett. Now, pull yourself together and be nice to her. Why, honey lamb, there's Mr. Bassett all alone by himself. Oh, how do you do? You all waiting for some pretty gal, Mr. Bassett? Well, I sort of hoped that Barbara... No, I was just sort of loafing. Well, how about a game of ping pong? Oh, I'd love to. Well, all now, right. you young folks, go right ahead. Uh, I'll just sit down and watch. Want to warm up a little? Very much, my friend. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, I had a door to. Well, if it ain't my old friend, the Grand Duke Oscar. Or are you Panam and Pete working the desert gold mine gag? I beg your pardon, sir. You have the advantage of me. I don't recollect ever having met you. Oh, so it's the Kentucky Colonel racket, huh? I resent your impertinence, sir. If you'll excuse me. Sit down. Let's talk over old times. Well, all right, Gogarty, but you haven't got a thing on me. Haven't I? What about the time I took you up the river and got back five years ahead of you? Still holding that youthful mistake against me, eh? Youthful? <laughs> Even the warden called you pop. Well, I age prematurely. But now I'm a respectable, upright pedestrian on the straight and narrow path. Sure you are. And I'm little Lord Fauntleroy. Now, Gordy, I appeal to you. Quit hunting. Woof, woof. Well, not for my sake. To spare my daughter from learning about my youthful delinquencies. Oh, is your daughter working with you this time? You know, she's the one fine thing in my life. Now, for the sake of that innocent, unspoiled flower, I... Okay, Toots. For her sake, I'll give you the morning to haul out of here. But I'll have my eye on you in the meantime. Well, that's my game. You're served. Not right now. I'm kind of tired. You want a drink? Of water? Oh, no, thank you. Wasn't that Gogarty? It was. We've got to make a quick clean-up and get out. Well, uh, how about Bassett? Can you sell him the old plantation? Watch me. Well, Colonel, how about you playing a game? I fear I've played my last game, sir. <laughs> Why, Colonel, a young man like you? <laughs> Did you observe that gentleman with whom I was just conversing? Oh, I had a glimpse of him. My doctor. He advises me to leave for the seashore <coughs> at once. Really? It's a matter of life and death. Poor old Pappy. Worst of it is, I'll have to dispose of my vast tobacco holding for whatever I can get. What? Sell the old plantation? What must be, honey. Must be. If you would be interested, Mr. Bassett. Well, I... Well, love, I suppose you come up to my room and we'll talk it over, hmm? <laughs> so I promised I might make love to you. Pretty funny, huh? Yes. Certainly a good one on Bassett. I get your father's blessing and he gets a kick in the pants. He's rather nice, Chad. Who? Oh, Bassett? Sure he is. Say, by the way, how are you doing with him? What do you mean? Well, you know, about getting him to invest in my subdivision. Oh. Say, look here, Babs. You're not letting me down, are you? No, of course not. Only... Only what? Are you sure your property is good as you say it is? Dearest, how can you say such a thing? Sorry, Rodney. I should think you would be. After all, dear, you, you know how much it means to both of us. Oh, please, Rodney, not now. Uh, let's ride back to the hotel. All right. Uh, 
Asher, the deeds and title to the entire Cornelius Holden. Golden opportunity of a lifetime. And yours, sir, for mere pittance. Well, I told you, Colonel, that I'm looking for a job. And my uh, capital is all tied up in, uh, in investments. Oh. Mm. Well, uh, but we could swap, couldn't we? But is your investment for these? I'm afraid not. Oh, come on now, sir. Make me a proposition. All right, I will. You have to go to the seashore, don't you? <coughs> My doctor's precise words, sir. And Randall's subdivision is a seaside one. That's right. And I want a job. Well? Now, if I can talk Randall into taking these for his property, will you make me the manager of the subdivision? That's a promise, sir. My hand on it. Thank you, Colonel. Yeah, where are you going, what's your hurry? We're going down to tell Rand that he just went in the tobacco business. So the old colonel's in a trading mood, huh? I believe I could talk him into one, providing there was something in it for me. Why should I cut you in? What's to prevent me dealing with the colonel direct? Well, I think I can get you a better trade. Maybe you can. Yeah. You swing this deal, and I'll give you a bonus of $2,000. Cash? Cash. I made a lot more this morning with much less effort. Indeed. Uh, You've heard of the Cornelius tobacco interest? Oh, yeah, yeah I have, yes, sir. Uh, the Colonel was talking to me this morning about it, the wonderful holdings. I'm about to acquire them. This is your lucky day, isn't it? I'd say so. How I envy you that ownership and the life of a wealthy plantation owner. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to sell my holdings at once. Uh, you sell them? Because of my other business obligations. You know, I, I might be in the market for something of that kind. Take a large amount of cash. Well, say that I, I give you 5000 as for an option, and then if things go as you say, we, we close the deal. We might be able to get together along those lines. Why? And uh, by the way, Mr. Penfield, if this deal does go through, I'm going to speak to my friend, the governor of Kentucky and see about having you made a colonel. You mean that? I mean that. Colonel Penfield? Well, Colonel Penfield. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna need some help. Mm -hmm. But this joint's crawling with crooks. Please, Mr. Gogarty, not so loud. Pipe down, will you? Now, you remember Bigamy Benny, alias Snakey Joe? I just seen him. He calls himself Bassett now. Uh huh. And, and who do you think he's working with? Our old friend, the Grand Duke Oscar. Yeah. Okay, Cap. I'll wait till the boys get here. So long. There you are, Toots. Everything's under control. Oh, I hope so. Now comb the wrinkles out of your forehead, and as soon as the boys get here, we'll pinch the whole mob. Hi there, Bassett. Oh, hello, Mr. Benville. You know, the more I see of you, the more I made up my mind, Bassett, that uh, we ought to improve our relationship. Really? Yeah. In what way? Well, my daughter is a very charming girl. Quite. Well, I'm glad you think so. A little bit, you know, independent, but all in all, I've said, what, well, what I'm trying to say is that she's already fallen in love with you. Why don't you marry her? And if I do? Well, if you do, I shall make you a very substantial wedding present. Sweep her off her feet. Elope with her tonight. Huh? Hello, sweetheart. Why the sweetheart? Father's not around. Well, he might be, honey. Come on, get in. We were going to stay where father could find us and... Well, things are different now. I've got a better plan. The next Saturday? Well, now, wait a minute. There's... There are a few things I want to tell you. I don't want to hear them. Oh, but there's some things you ought to hear about me. No. If you confess, then I'll have to. And I don't want to confess. 
Oh, darling. Break it up, break it up. Hey, what's the idea? Oh, no. This is Bassett. That's Bassett. Do we pinch the dame, too? No, no, don't. That's Miss Penfield. Hey, Come give on. me a minute, will you? I'll give you 20 Come years. On. Come on. Don't take him away. Bring him back here. There, there, Miss Penfield. It's all for the best. All oh, for the best? What do you mean? Why, he's nothing but a crook. I don't believe it. It's true. He even stole this car. Stole it? Yes, in the city. Stole it? My gloves. This is my car. Really? Then he is a thief. And worse, Miss Penfield. Go ahead, tell me all of it. Let me know just how big a fool I've been. Well, the police call him Bigamy Benny. He goes around making love to wealthy young ladies so they can swindle their fathers. And I fell for that. Hadn't I better take you back to the hotel, Miss Penfield? You ought to take me to the home for feeble-minded girls. But let's go. Yes, sir, Mr. Penfield, you can thank your lucky stars that I was on the job. <laughs> and to think I engaged that young crook, Bassett, to make love to my daughter. <laughs> well, they all ought to be in the colonel's room for now. <clears throat> you think so? Yep. Well, uh... well, here they are, Sergeant. Both of them. Both of them? That isn't Bassett. Of course not, that's... Rodney Randall. Well, the manager pointed this bird out and said he was Bassett. That's Randall. I'm Bassett. See, he admits it. Well, he isn't the Bassett I want. What kind of a Bassett are you? Well, I'm Bassett, all right. Can you prove it? Well, I used to work for that overstuffed pelican. That's preposterous. That's an out and out lie. Don't call uh, me a liar. When, when did you work for me? You ought to know. You gave me a thousand dollar bonus. What is this, old home week or something? Uh, wait a minute, please. I, I think I recognize this young man. Good. Then maybe you'll tell me. Is he Bassett or isn't he Bassett? I don't care what he's a Bassett or not. He's a disloyal and putting a scam. What do you mean, disloyal? Disloyal to me in my laundry. Were you in your laundry ever loyal to me? Of, it, of all things. I wore out ten pair of pants in the front seat of your trucks, and I set up nights inventing that new flat rate system. And what did I get for it? A 20% cut in half, but back in a bonus. Did you? Did you think out that yes. flat rate cut? I thought Fash. Fash, why, he couldn't figure out a way to count on his thumbs. I've got Bassett, Sergeant. Let go of me. You wall-eyed idiot. That's the manager of the hotel. Yes. That's what I've been trying to tell him. I'm sorry, Mr. Grimwood. I thought he was trying to pull a fast one. Who told you that was Bassett? Oh, a chap with a little black mustache about, about Harry's size here. Oh. So I brought her back to the hotel. But where is she now? The last I saw of her, she was talking with Mr. Randall. All the cooperation I get, you could stick in your ear. Here I do everything but slap bracelets on a whole confidence ring, and you got to pinch the victim's best truck driver. Can I help it, Sergeant, if you don't give us the right name? Oh. Keep away from that window. You might get wise yourself and jump. How can... Hey, there he is. Bassett. I mean the crook. He did with the dame. Come on. Uh, must be my daughter. She's eloping. Uh, wait for me, please. Come on. Come on. Please, please. You listen to a suggestion, young man. Let's scram. Scram nothing. I'm staying right here. I haven't done anything wrong. <sighs> well, in that case, I suppose I may as well keep company. Take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife? Say yes. I do. Do you take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? Answer, I do. Yes. I now pronounce you man and wife. Stop! Why, if it ain't Mr. Penfield. Babs. Then you didn't elope with him. I'm true with men. Here. But you don't understand. I understand enough, bigamy Benny. Bigamy. I'm doing this for you, not for him. Well, go ahead, go ahead, free yourself. Well, but lady, these are no good. There's a file there. Well, if I start filing on these cuffs, my grandchildren will have to finish the job. But he... Uh, I mean, you've got to escape before they... Here, bend down a minute, honey. Yeah, down here. 
I don't need these tools. Well, good luck. You're not going anywhere. Let go of me, you... You crook. Now, you shut up and listen. Let go of me. I won't listen to you. You're going to listen to everything I have to say. I will not. My daughter. Have you seen anything of my daughter? Why, uh... Oh, yes, Mr. Penfield. She left a message for you. Said if you came in, you would have phoned room 304. Uh, room 304? Yes, sir. Room 304. Right away. Hurry, please. Room... Uh, Hello, Dad. Did you enjoy your ride? Yeah. What am I doing? I'm sitting on a young man's lap. Oh, a very nice young man. He's going to be vice president of your plant and your son-in-law. Yes. His name? Oh, I'm not quite sure. I th Bassett. Ah, uh, Bassett, that is. J. Walter Bassett. <laughs> Babs, Babs, Babs. That's, uh... This way with my bags. I need this hotel forever. I beg your pardon. Is something wrong? Out of my way, Mujik. What is your name, sir? Oscar, Grand Duke of all the Russians. Oscar! <laughs> 